what's up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music. Thank you for the support and hanging out for another lesson. It's going to be kind of a theory, you know, practice session uh, using the CAGE system, which I do have a multi-hour step-by-step course. It's, it's basically like fretboard theory is the CAGE system. So I'm going to use a bunch of that, of that stuff in this lesson, but I'll leave a link in the first comment down there. You can check that out as well. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, learn some music. All right, here's some great things for playing over changes that have helped me, and I think they'll help you. Uh, and it just helps you develop as a musician as well. So we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff that comes from the caged system. Uh, and we're going to be doing, you know, arpeggios, chords, just kind of understanding the guitar as opposed to learning some licks. So I'm going to take the chords of Lay Down Sally by Eric Clapton. <laughs> because it's just a one, four, five. We're just using that as a springboard for practice. I may pick another progression later in the lesson just to jump around, just to show you kind of what's going on. So, lay down, Sally. D, 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 D. E, 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 back to A, A, A. So let's just start looking at some arpeggios. We'll go with that D shape first, because I already have a video on that. But just to give you an example, so A major with the D shapes right here. So there's that shape from the cage system, which would be D of the word caged. So that's an A major. And there's an arpeggio based off that shape. And it would look like this. 12 to 9, or 9 to 12, the root, 10 on the B, and then over to that, 9 on the G, and then 11 on the D, and then 12 on the A. And it's actually, when you do it that way, it looks like a C shape there, and then a D shape right here. So you have this arpeggio, and we'll, we'll just do these, the upper top three strings for right now. So that's for A major. The next chord's D major, and I'm just going to play that for right now, the same thing right here. And we're finding it by the root on the B string from that D shape. So I have A major. Then we have D, should be the same thing right here. And then I have E major next, which you can just do up a whole step. And then back to A. So just to begin with, when you have a simple progression, I'm just using one shape right now. But if you know more shapes, you can even just do it in one spot. And I'll show that in a second. But so here we have the lay down Sally. And so I'm just looking at that arpeggio and I'm I can do it in any order. see that root, and I can see that D chord right there. And so I can practice that in reverse and forward and, you know, one note at a time. And disclaimer, this is practice right now. I'm not going to throw a bunch of arpeggios in a row to play a solo or improvise melodies. This is like study, right? So even though I was just playing it over a groove, I'm trying to make it musical. But what I'm really doing is I'm studying the arpeggio. I'm looking at the notes. I'm figuring it out. And then I'm experimenting. So, for instance, I could go, OK, well, what if I just play two notes of each arpeggio? <laughs>
So one thing I did there is I did just go into solo mode for a second. I just started letting it go out and started soloing, but then I went back again. So uh, just re-emphasizing, this is a study session. We're not, you know, performing right now. We're, we're analyzing. We're being creative. So let's take another arpeggio, shall we? We're going to do this, the one that comes from this shape for A major. We're going to play the upper registers. And so you have this little piece, you know, right from that. No different, but it would be this shape. But we're going to add this major third up here. And then even that too. And so these major thirds, which would be right here and right here, they just sound great and melodic and bluesy uh, when you slide into them or hammer into them. You know, as soon as you just add that to the arpeggio, so instead of... Crap, sorry. Instead of that, you just simply do a little hammer there and hammer there and you get... And now it's, uh, you know, more musical. So if I add that, so for A major, and it doesn't have to have that, you know. So that'd be for A. For D, it'd be up here. would be up here. Back to A. Right, so then I could do the exact same exploration with that shape. practicing. So I'm moving on. So that's another shape. Now let's just combine the two we did. The D shape and we'll call this the E shape. It's got the root on the E string. The D shape has that root on the B string. So, check it out. You can do stuff like this. You can do the D shape for A. And then the E shape for, for D. And then just a whole step up for E. Back to the D shape for A. You also have the chord shapes. Let's mix it around. Let's start with the E shape on A. And then the D shape right here. And then E right here.
start to splinter together and see the little half steps to connect between the chord changes. And it just will really expand your knowledge of the fretboard, your chord construction. It also is theory. So let me show you one more. And I recommend all this stuff is from uh, really from my caged course at Marty Music. So uh, it's multiple hours step by step going through all these shapes, all that stuff. So we have this shape, the A shape. And the cage system is C shape, A shape, G shape, E shape, and D shape. And when you know those shapes, they have an arpeggio with them as well and then they also have little triads of them, then you can play up and down the whole neck, all the voicings, it all comes together from there. So we have this A shape here. So the upper register triad of that, the roots on that G string right there, comes from that. So we would have for D major, for instance, we'd have five, seven, 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 if we keep going, four, five, five. We'll just look at that upper register right now. And that major third's on the B string, so you'd get That's D. So where would A be for that? It could be up here. So 12, 14, 14. So when we add that into the mix, I could do the E shape for A. And then this new. And then that for the E shape. Let me try them as chords. By the way, that is just that, but that note an octave down. So it's called an inversion. I have a video, free video on Marty Music on this particular shape, but that's an E major chord right there. Back to A. right here. Back to A. So if I can see those shapes, I can see the arpeggio too, and they're connected. Or a D. So real quick to close it out, we've already been going a long time. If you're still with me here, you got it.
you got what it takes. <laughs> uh, check it out. The another just very diatonic, meaning it all fits in one key. Uh, chord progression. The chords to Bob Marley, No Woman, No Cry, or Let It Be. Same thing. So C to G. A minor. We didn't talk about any minor shapes in this lesson. A minor to F. So let me just start with that. So I'd have C to G. So that. And then a G shape I can see right here. A minor we didn't talk about, but I'm going to just, instead of D major, I'm going to use the D minor shape for A minor. This is more conceptual than getting all these shapes yet. Cage system. Like that. And then F. And I can drive it in a different spot. C to G. A minor. F major. And the arpeggios. Thanks again, you guys, for the support. Uh, thank you for going over to martymusic.com and showing support there as well, leaving comments, sharing the videos. You can leave requests in the comments below as well. And I always read those. And hope to see you again real soon. Later.